Today on Community Connections, I have one of my favorite people, Judy Franco. Thank you very much for coming over. It's been a little while since we've seen each other. Now that whole one of my favorite people in the world thing, how many people have you said that to this week? Nobody, nobody, other than my immediate family. But when I, when I saw you, what I told all the crew here is we're almost like family. We are almost like family. Um, your parents are good? My parents are great. My parents are in Florida. They expect to be back the 14th or so. They send their love to you. I've known them. Actually, I've known them longer than I've known you. That's probably true. Right, and I... How? Because your parents live in Long Branch. They, you know, I've, I've represented them in a right, couple right, of things. Right, right, right. I actually, we, we, I did a closing for them that was absolutely hysterical. Oh, it was a closing thing? I thought you were going to tell me, you know, it was like I a nasty close... murder no, no. case or something like that. No, I no, not no? at all. Nothing uh, Joe, that you need to Joe and, let me Joe know and about? Roz, and your husband and I are almost related. That's right. People... What do they say? They say that we look almost like, like twin brothers. And that is why I tell people that I have such a crush on Mayor Adam Schneider, because you look just like right. my husband. Right, and, and um, your kids are good? My kids are great, everybody is great, and to tell you the truth, Adam, the only thing that I regret over these last few years is not having seen you as often as I'd like to. Well, now you're on you the show. You know where I live, come by, come I on. Come and I actually, and coffee. I know where you, the funny thing is, and um, I bumped into you with your daughter Mary, yeah. and um, she was moving into the apartment that I lived in and my wife and I lived in when we first got married. Which blows me away because you and I, no matter how far we stray from each other, there's always some <laughs> connection. Close. Now, do you remember, Adam, we were reminiscing about my old days at New Jersey, uh, no, 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 now I'm at New 107. Jersey. 107. 107. Right. Oldies 107.1. Right, it was the oldies station then. And you performed a marriage ceremony there on the air for us. Do you remember that? Was that... The one that we did on the beachfront, or no. we did it in the studio? we did it in the studio. Who was getting married? I don't even remember. Some listener. I remember doing a wedding, and, and, and maybe they'll even watch this, because I have the, and I had a picture of it, and I think it was on the air. It was Michael, the names were, believe it or not, Michael and Lisa Marie, back when Michael Jackson, obviously, was still alive, right. was married to Elvis Presley's daughter, Lisa Marie. And, and you did? I did their you wedding. You did their wedding? And there was a... A, a radio station, I think it was from Oldies 107, with their mic in the face. I had the picture in the it office. It probably for years. was. That might have been the one on the air. And you used to call the radio station all the time. All the time. And, you know, be but careful. It was, it's snowing. You but know. it was a great thing to have a local radio station with someone who lived in town on the air because we could talk about local things. I miss that. Yeah. I do miss that. Because they went computer and now there's no radio station in town. I know. The truth is, though, what I do at New Jersey with a 1.5, I almost feel like it's still one of the last bastions of local radio because we're still talking about, we're talking about New Jersey. Okay, right. it's a big, you know, state, but we will focus in on some of the issues. I get to talk about you all the time. Well, you're, you were on that for a long time. You left, did some different things. And yeah. how long have you been back? I've been back. I came back February 21st, so it's just about a month. Right. Um, I left to deal with some of my uh, family issues. I have mm -hmm. a son with special needs. I was taking care of him. And I was taking care of some stuff that needed to be, you know, I'm a right. mom of four kids. Right. In the interim, my daughter got married, had a baby. I'm a grandma. Hard to believe. Well, Hard to believe. you know, Adam, I tell people that most of my friends lie and say that they're much younger than they are. But I say I'm older because, like, I'm 49. Okay. If I tell you, you know, I'm 42, you go, wow, that lady looks like an old bag. But what I do is I say I'm 57, because how good do I look for 57? Okay, there you go. Is that a better great. strategy? It, it is, a, yeah. So I'm a grandma. All these great things happened. I produced my musical, my children's musical. That mm -hmm. was my dream come true that I performed with my daughters. And um, Where that, did you do that? That, that was 
the last time I remember talking to you, you were taking that show kind of on the road. I know you performed it at the JCC. Yeah. Anywhere else? We really, no, we didn't end up taking it anywhere because I got busy with other things. I was started doing a podcast on mm -hmm. the radio and then, I mean on the internet, and then I had the opportunity to do some fill-in work at WABC in New York, which you probably don't even know about. No. See, you missed a couple of chapters of my life, Adam. But, my um, loss. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so the, you know, we'd always planned on, we're going to do a benefit, we're going to do it here and there, and then other things got in the way. And then before I knew it, you know, the radio station called me up and offered me my old job back, and I did couldn't you, say no. Did you anticipate that? Was that something you had talked about when you left, or it was... In a million years, I had, I thought it would never happen. I thought I was out of radio for good. Um, I missed it. There wasn't one day that I woke up in the last two years where I wasn't, you know, missing it. Um, but it just, it, it was complete coincidence. The girl who was, uh, Michelle Palenza, who was kind enough to take over for me when I left, she was there in, for me in the pinch. And uh, she decided she wanted to take care of her kids, so she left. And then I slipped back in, and everything is uh, as it should be. Now, you co-host with someone. With Dennis Malloy. Who we, you were on with for a number of years. Yes, we were together 11 years, and then the two years that I was gone, and now we're back again. And what kind of things do you talk about? I mean, why, it's not, I'm sorry, New Jersey 101.5. Right. I would probably describe it as somewhat right of center politically talk radio. You know, I think that that's a good description. It, it tends to be more, it's called hot talk, really. Okay. Because if you call it talk radio, people think of Rush Limbaugh, people think of Sean Hannity, and you know, we're more fun than that. So when I listen, I was uh, yeah. You know I, I mean? never I never listened to Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity. There, right. I well, no you wouldn't. To, you no, wouldn't. I wouldn't. But our show deals more with lifestyle topics. We talk about families. If I had a fight with my husband, we talk about that. What does Mark think about that? Mark, um, I think uh, does he come up like every show? Pretty much every show. He figures so prominently in my life. There's not too much about my life I could say without talking about him. Okay. Um, I think in the beginning he was a little taken aback by it, but then after that I was like, look, honey. But he's obviously known you a long, yeah. long time and he's somewhat I think used to it. He knew what he was getting into when he married me, Adam. Probably. So basically, when you're with me, you're along for the radio <laughs> ride. <laughs> look, you're my friend. Right. You know, and we're good friends. And I've mentioned you already. I'm only back two months, at least three times. What were, what were you talking about? Because, um, you know, we don't do eminent domain anymore. Right. So there's none of. Because it there was were some, only complimentary. I'm glad to hear that. We, there were, there, I, I do remember one discussion a couple of years ago about your swimming pool. Yes, yes, but we didn't talk about that. Okay. We were talking about the Long Branch Police. Good or bad? I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of the Long Branch Police. Uh, the, okay. And the, the reason that I say that is we live in a town of, I don't know, 40, 50,000. How many people in Long about Branch? About 37,000. Okay, so 40, 000, for 37,000 people, we have real things to deal with. And mm -hmm. our police force, I respect them so much because they're not just waiting in bushes to pull people over, although they do do that. But they're, you know, they have you real... You did get a speeding ticket early <laughs> on that we, we talked about several years ago. Yeah, I got two. Okay. Okay. But I just always say about our police force, they have real things to do. They have real issues to deal with. They're not looking to harass people. Where right. some towns in New Jersey, unfortunately, they're more quiet and the cops have to keep busy. So they kind of, you know, they find things to do. No, our, our cops don't have to just sort of hang out and wait. No, uh, I love them. They're all, they're great guys. Did you have an encounter with them recently, that, or did something happen? Or well, just, we were talking you... about two brothers on the police force and um, how I'm friendly with one of them, and I don't know the other one. I get them mixed up. So the gotcha. conversation came up about these two brothers, and people called in, and, and then Long Branch in general comes up, and I say, well, you know, because they have that great mayor there. Okay, well, that, that's a good way to phrase it. Okay. Now, now, how much of what you talk about, you know, the, the big issue in, in New Jersey is, you know, Governor Christie, his right. popularity, his, his method of dealing with things, which is rather confrontational. Mm -hmm. How much of the show deals with those kind of things, that kind of pol political issue? To be very honest, since I have come back, we've been doing so much more um, pop culture stuff because 
the prevailing opinion at the radio station is what you would think. We're, we, we like him, right. you know, and people don't want to have it shoved down their throat 24 hours a day because then the people who don't like him aren't going to want to listen. Mm -hmm. So when there's something important to talk about, we talk about it. We're not just, it's just not a love fest for Governor Christie all day long. So I would say 25% of the show. What a, let me ask you, what hours are you on? Eight, I'm 10? on 10 to 2. Okay. Every hour is a different topic. So if you had to ask me, I would say maybe one topic a day is about politics, maybe two. That's the most that I do because people really like to hear us being funny. Right. You know? Now, do you do... Uh, do you do call-ins? Do people call up and want to yes. ask questions and I'm chat? I'm ashamed of you that you don't know this. Your next day off is when? You better That's, be listening. I'm most like, you know what? The, the, I would actually listen to it. Well, obviously in the car, because I don't, I'm like most people. Who, who listens to the radio in their house anymore? No, no. You, it's, I, I it, mean, as a kid, right, we listen to the radio. Do you have a smartphone? Is, yeah, sure. Okay, you get the app, the New Jersey 101.5 app, and you listen to me. Listen, you're one of the few Democrats I like. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't like, I don't even want to ask you what you think. I, I, I still like our president a lot. So we, okay, well, we'll just move on to, is there a commercial break here? Not, there will be, there will be. And we'll argue about that later, but I, I, still, I still like him a lot. Okay. Um, we can agree to disagree. Do, they, do, do radio stations poll for those kind of things? Like, all right, we're, we're, we're saying what our listeners want. And, and what I, where I'm really going, does anybody ever tell you what to say or not say on the radio? You know, it's funny that you should ask that because people always say, how do you come up with your topics? How do you decide what you're going to talk about? And I guess for most people on the radio, it would be a matter of show preparation. You pick up the newspapers, you look at the Internet, you see what's going on. But so much of our stuff is based on just what's going on in our lives, that a lot of the preparation is just the conversation I had with my kids this morning or what my dad said to me last night. So, no, nobody tells us what to say. Stuff Joe has said. Is there, like... Jo Adam, Joe is... I know Joe. ...a big part of the show. He called in today. He's on the show at least once a week. Well, he must love that. Ah, people... First of all, he gets recognized wherever he, he goes from his very distinctive voice. Yes, I can hear Joe's voice, and I haven't... He talks like... Yeah, I know, and I, I can hear the voice. And I'm thinking, I, now Mary's married how long? She's married about a year and a little December, more. December of 09. December 09. Okay, so I, I might not have seen Joe since then. Well, he still talks he, like he, this. You got it. Your father's about five foot four. Yeah. Oh, I think you're being very kind. <laughs> he's um, about five And he's got that, that, that very rough voice. Yes. Um, and, and, and he's not a rough guy in a million years. No, he but he sounds like be. a gangster. He's, he does, and he looks a little bit, so when he starts talking, you're like, okay. You have to have him on the show, Adam. That would be interesting. <laughs> We'd have both, with your mom. We'd have all three of you on, um, and Mark, so people could see how much we look alike. That would be that so fun. That would be fun. fun. Um, but you're, you're, I can see your dad being on the radio, and then when, he, when he's up here, you know, the six months of the year that he's in Long Branch, he would... He would really bask on that call. He would love he it. He gets so much attention. He's been in Europe. He's been on cruises. He's called stores for information, and people say, are you Joe Franco? And no way. I love it. I, I'm so happy for him. He's a star. That's great. And he That's, loves it. What does he call What does he, like, what did he talk about when he called in today? Today we, talk, we were talking about viral videos on YouTube and which ones people like to watch. Okay. And people called, oh, I like the babies this and the dancing this and the Friday, the black. You don't know any of this because you're too old, but. Uh, I have a 14-year-old daughter who, who, who goes on YouTube all the time. Okay, it's her so favorite television channel. That's the only way we would know this from right. our kids. And uh, my dad called to tell about his favorite YouTube video. And what is your dad's favorite YouTube? And he cries from it. It's a wedding where the groom got up and sang a song from Fiddler on the Roof to his wife. And the bride was completely shocked. My father watches it and cries like a baby. Now, if you know my father, it doesn't look like he has any emotion in him. And he cries like a baby. So he called up to tell us that that was... about this beautiful video he watches. And we're going to end the first half of the show with that story. We'll Thank be you. back in a minute. You've known for years that this is the number one cause of lung cancer, smoking. That's why the Surgeon General issued this warning. But do you know the number one cause of lung cancer for non-smokers? It's in this room. 
You can't see it or smell it. It's radon. Radon is an invisible radioactive gas that seeps inside your home from underground. It can build up to dangerous levels without notice. Now the Surgeon General has issued another lung cancer warning. And whether you smoke or not, breathing radon can cause lung cancer. That's why you need to have your home tested. Protect your family. Call 1-800-SOS-RADON. Heed the warning. Have your home tested, because radon problems can be fixed. Over the past 20 years, Clean Ocean Action has fought and won many battles to protect our ocean. We've all worked hard and are proud of our accomplishments, but the fight's not over. Pollution from people is a serious problem, and you can help. Get involved. Volunteer. Make a difference. Volunteer. Get involved. Get involved. You can make a difference. Be one of Clean Ocean. Join Clean Ocean Action. Join Clean Ocean Action. You are the solution to ocean pollution. And we're back for the second half of the show with Judy Franco. How long has it been since you were referred to as Jersey Judy? You know, it's been a long time since I was Jersey Judy on the air, I guess 1997. Was that a Y107 thing? Yeah, new, oldies 107.1. Y107 was right before me. Okay. So 97, but it's stuck. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So wherever I go, people still call me Jersey Judy, and I, I like it. Well, you, know? you were in New York for... Right, I went to went, New York. You went to New York. Which was the worst thing I ever did in my entire life. Because you didn't enjoy being on the big time radio or because the commute and the family and the... the both. The, you know, the corporate radio thing is so different than radio used to be in the old days mm -hmm. and it was not fulfilling at all. You know, them telling you every single song you're going to play and every single minute, you know, when you You were more it. of a disc jockey then. Yeah, and just the politically correct atmosphere and the commute and it was just... Horrible. You, so you went from there to 101.5, which is right. a very different atmosphere. Yes. Very they, loose, very laid back. They're not trying to tell you what to say, and there's no... There, no. The times I've listened to it, and it, it's been a while, it's not politically correct. No. That's not the atmosphere. No. That's More, why you have to be nice to me, Adam, because I can say whatever I want. Well, you already have, so that, that really isn't <laughs> a threat anymore. I mean, once it's, once it's out there, it's, it's okay. Um, but you took the better part of two years off, and part of it when you told me you were doing that, was you wanted to do a musical with your kids. Right. How'd that come about? This was a, a dream of mine. Songs that I had written, 17 songs, that I wrote in 1992. And these songs were sitting around on a little cassette tape in my house, you know, while I raised my kids. And I always said, one day I'm going to write this music, you know, write the play to go with it, and one day I'm going to make it a big... This was my dream. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, you know, when my kids got a little older, I realized that they were stage people, like I am, and they were singers. So I wrote a book for it, um, and I said, one day I'm going to perform it. And in those two years, I finally decided I'm going to make that dream come true. It was called Judy and the Jolly Bean, still is. We recorded um, the CD with 11 of the songs, which are included in the show. Mm -hmm. And it truly was a dream come true for me and for my two daughters that appeared in it with me. It was now, unbelievable. Which two daughters were in it with you? Mary and Roslyn. And it's about a family. Um, Roslyn named after your mother. Yeah, exactly. And Mary's named after my mother-in-law. Okay. And they, um, it's about a mom. Two kids trying to put together a show, and the mom is constantly butting in. Which part did you have? And I can't... <laughs> okay, I was typecast, you know? And, um, you know, the original music and songs, and then we, we handed out the book at the show with the lyrics and the CDs. And I think probably the biggest accomplishment of my life, or the greatest accomplishment of my life, is when people stop me in the street and they say, Judy, my kids sing all the words to your songs. And it's so cool. People play it in the car, and the kids sing along. Are and they, I love are they it. kids' songs or really just what you it's wrote? It's all kids' songs. Okay. And it's all about, you know, the regular eat, you know, healthy food, do your homework, and all the positive messages that you want to give to kids, all those nauseatingly positive messages that you give to kids. But it really was, it was educational, it was inspirational, and it was also interactive. We brought kids up onto the stage. Almost every kid in the audience at some point gets to get up on the stage with us and sing and dance and whatever. So it was really quite a 
big undertaking, how many but we did time, it. How many times was it performed? We performed it, we really only performed it in one big performance. Now, we had plans to take it to, uh, we were supposed to do a um, benefit at deal school, and then my daughter had the nerve to get pregnant and not be able to be in the show. She was, this was the one, she is the one who got married in December of Yes. And when she found out she was pregnant, it, we said, it, you know, she was feeling that regular morning sickness and stuff. And my, I don't think I can rehearse it. And I don't think so. She, she ruined the show. <laughs> no, but but so you got a grand, you got a grandchild. I got a grandbaby out of it, and With now boy or girl. I got a baby girl, Sheila Name. Ray, Sheila okay. Ray, and she is um, the light of my life. That's my other you know, greatest accomplishment. I have a grandchild. <laughs> yeah, and it's everything they say, you know, that grandchildren are God's reward to you for not killing your own kids. And every time I think, every time I look at her, I think, wow, like I never realized how much I hate my kids <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> compared to this thing. But no, it's, how old it's you, lovely. How, how old is your granddaughter? She's three months old. And now I made my daughter promise, Mary promise, that as soon as she gets back into, you know, fighting shape, we're going to do another performance of Judy and the Jolly Beans. Okay. Okay, right. you got a spot for me in Long Branch to oh, do I'm, it, Adam? I'm, we'll, fi well, we might. We'll figure it out. Okay. I'm sure we can. Good, because I'm looking forward to it. All right. Um, who on, now, 101.5, it's, it's a different kind of a rate. You were talking about how corporate it was. When, I think you were on ABC, WABC, yeah. remember, right? Oh, no, the station PLJ. that I was on in New York was, um, was 101. 5.1. Okay. I ended up f filling in this summer on WABC, but 105.1 was, it used to be the old Mix 105, and it turned into the new 105.1, The Buzz, when I was oh, I, on okay. it. Okay, I do remember that. It wasn't fun. What? Um, and that was, it was owned by a big company, but this is a different kind of big company, the company that I work for now. Who, who, who is that? Millennium Radio. Okay. The company was owned by, the radio station was owned by Press Communications. Um, Right. Robert McAllen, who uh, his name is on one of the buildings here at the university, was actually my boss at the time. And they sold the company, they sold the radio station to Millennium Radio, which owns it now. They're a great company to work for. They are very tolerant of all my issues, and trust me, I have a lot of them. I, you know, with my religious commitments and my family commitments and my mother stuff and my, you know, I'm always causing them a problem. I got to <laughs> take off for this, I got to take off for that. But, um, these are great people to work for. Now, I, I know I've asked you this before, but it's not every girl from the Sephardic Syrian community yes. who ends up in radio. I'm, I'm, the black, I'm a black sheep, yes. I wasn't going to go there. I was just going <laughs> to stop at unique. Yeah. Well, you know, my parents brought us up a little differently. We were brought up out of town. You know, we were brought up in California. So we were, we were not brought up in the thick of it. Right. And um, it was always pretty important to my mom and dad that we you know, sort of had a more of a global perspective on things, you know, and not be a sheltered. And uh, you went, we're at Monmouth University now, taking yes. this, you went, you're, you I, went here. Yes, I did. Um, and, uh, class of? 80, 89, 80, 81, 82, 83. All right. And, uh, I actually was music director for the radio station here, WMCX Radioactive Radio at the Jersey Shore. Oh, there you go. We were 88. Was that, was that your first radio experience? It absolutely was, and turned me on for the rest of my life. And I knew from doing it that I wanted to do it forever. And um, So you have great things to say about Monmouth University. Ah, I love this place. We were on 88.1 at that time, uh -huh. and we were 10 watts. These kids are spoiled here now. They have 1,000 watts or something. 10 watts, does that make it to the edge of the campus? It made it to across the street to the... To the yeah. <laughs> It made it to the dorms, and that's all we cared about because right. we just wanted to dedicate songs to our friends in the dorms. That's that's what most co yeah, that's what uh, yeah. college radio stations do. But now they moved, you know, after I left, they moved to 88.9. They're a big station now. They do things the right way. And they're probably, know? I don't know if they're online or not, but you probably can get them anywhere. I'm sure you can. And I've, I've gotten the opportunity to hear some of it because I don't live too far from here. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, they are really doing it right, these kids. They're going to be these kids, I'm sounding like a hundred now, but there, a lot of them I think will be really successful if they choose that. Is path. there a big, is there a lot of opportunity in radio? Why would anybody want to be in radio? I well, have to say. Listen, I think at our, we're, we're, we're about the same age. I mean, 
You've been doing the same thing. I've been practicing law for 30 years, and it's like, why would anybody go to law school? That's how I feel about radio. I love it, though. I love it, but there's money in law. There's no money in radio, and that's the thing. You know, because of the Internet and because of everything everybody can get out there, mm -hmm. you know, and all the different sources, you, you know, media sources, people don't need radio as much. However, it'll never die. It's, you always want to wake up in the morning and have your alarm clock, you know, wake you up with the news or the weather in your town and get into your car and listen. Even though there's satellite radio, people still want to hear their local guy say, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. I mean, oh, okay. <laughs> or whatever when, when I started, when I first heard you, you were on a local radio station that was particular to Long Branch. Right. And there was a couple of stations that fit into that category. I mean, right. the press used to own WJLK. I don't even know if that's around. There was that yes, one. Yes, our company owns that okay, station. Okay, there was an alternative rock and roll station on the FM that I think is gone. Yeah. Do you see those things, that little niche market coming back where all you, like a local weekly newspaper is a local... I would love to see that, Adam. And again, I don't think local radio will ever be dead. But yeah, you know, I do think that the same way people get nostalgic for things, you know, that's why Mad Men is so popular and that's why people want to, you know, just go to their high school reunions and reminisce. I do think that there's that, especially with baby boomers, there's that thing about the old days that people like. You know, I used to, you ever see the game show network? I don't even know if it's on anymore. I know. I, I used I don't to watch, watch I know that it's black there. and white game shows. That just, were on when we were, we were little yeah, kids. Yeah, just to make me, you know, just to harken back to those days. And I think that that's what people are going to listen for in radio now and in the future. I think they want to hear that local guy telling you that this school is closed and that, the, you know, watch out on these streets, there's snow, just like you used to in mm -hmm. the old days when you called me up. You used okay. to say, be careful where right. you park. We used to talk about those kinds yeah. of things on the air. Uh, you were telling me, you were, you were stuck in, now you broadcast, 101.5 is broadcast out of Ewing, which is right at the Trenton Hamilton area. Exactly. You got there before the big snow of December hit. Yeah, that was fun. How did you guys, how, you guys stayed on the air, everybody showed up for work? No, I was about the only person who was there. I knew that I had to be, anybody who knew they had to be there slept over from the day before because everybody knew this storm was coming. So you got, went out there on a Sunday afternoon? Went out there on a Sunday with Mark. We had a little vacation, stayed in a hotel for three days. It was great. The kids kept calling, are you guys coming home? No, we're snowed in, you know? So did, really... Mark, did Mark get on air? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. He came into the studio. Came into with the you. studio. I mean, there's no place else to go. We had the hotel shuttle drive us up the road to the radio station. Where's the hotel in Ewing? Um, it's by the airport. It's okay. a little All right. Marriott. Yeah. Now we didn't have snow in Ewing like you guys had here, so we had no idea what was going on in Long Branch. I call up the house. We had, you know, five inches, you know, and I call home, and my kids say, "Ma, don't come home. You're never going to get into the driveway." You know, You'll which is probably true. Did you think there were like? Of course, <laughs> I thought maybe there's a big party in the house and they don't want me there because um, I've never experienced anything like that right. before. And finally, you know, two, three days later, we did get, we got home and I couldn't believe what was going and on. And your street was plowed, I hope. My street was plowed. Yay, Long Branch. <laughs> Love you guys. So, yeah, but that was quite an experience and I was just filling in then. I didn't, oh, you weren't back I wasn't as a regular. back permanently. So I thought, uh-oh, is this a bad what were the What were the call? We have about one minute left. What yeah. were the call-ins like about the snow those, those days you were on? Well, it's funny because we tried to switch topics, but we couldn't. That's all people wanted to say. And Adam, everybody, everybody was flipping. Everybody was stuck. Right. And it was really kind of cool to be there and safe and protected. And everybody was sort of... It was a group effort. It was a mm -hmm. team effort. Were all people of angry Jersey or they were together. just like, hey, this is, this is wild? We've both, been... both. Yeah. People were angry. People were... You know, this is cool, this is wild. It was an experience that all of New Jersey, or most of New Jersey, shared together, so it was fun. But Jimmy Mazza dug your street out. I so you, you Jimmy know, Mazza, can I give him a plug? Absolutely. I love you, Jimmy Mazza. You're unbelievable. <laughs> He's so, a, he was, yeah, he helped, he helped us get into our cul-de-sac. So. Well, I really appreciate you coming over. It's Thank been a you. lot of fun. It Say hello to everybody. It's always great to see you. Thank you so much. Most of your family still lives in Long Branch. Yep. Um, when's the next family get-together I'm being invited to? You will be invited. Okay. The next, uh, my daughter has another boy, you're at the Briss. I'm there. Well, thank I you mean, very much for coming over. I mean, a boy. <laughs> she has a girl. What am I talking about? Thank you, Adam. It's so my much pleasure. fun. Yeah. Always a pleasure.